Hi all, I am with uh, Jimmy John Lewis, an Haiti born international actor who has worked across languages, countries, and cultures. He is one of the producers of the movie Ardu Jividam or God Life, and he has also acted in it. Hello, Jimmy, welcome to the week. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. You have an impressive body of work from what I have seen in your filmography. You were part of uh, some of the fantastic shows like The Shield, which is one of my mm. favorite shows ever and Green Arrow and you work shared screen with some of the legends like Bruce Willis. You were also part of several international projects. Mm -hmm. How different was working in an Indian movie? Did you have a cultural shock of sorts? I wouldn't say shock because uh, I'm based in Hollywood but uh, as you mentioned I work in Europe, in Africa, in South America, in many parts of the world. So I think I trained myself to, to accept the different kind of uh, ways of doing movies. And, um, and uh, when I got to, the, to, to that production, you know, to the Indian uh, set, which was uh, in Algeria, in the desert of Algeria, yeah, you know, I sort of had uh, small inspect uh, <laughs> expectations, you know, but, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, I let myself be very open to everything. First of all, I was the only one who wasn't Indian. Oh, Malayali. Oh, an Indian, yes. So I'm like, uh, my, my words wouldn't be very, very strong against everybody. So <laughs> all I had to do is just accept a different kind of culture and just try to blend in as much as I could. And, and yeah, the difference is uh, what, you know, I mean, for example, with that, with that, uh, with that crew, with that production, we work like every day. This is you are not used to. No, you don't do that. You know, you you, you stop like at least, you know, twice a day, twice a week. Twice you have like, yeah, you have two days off. You know, if it's an indie movie, maybe one day off. But for sure, you have at least one day off. But maximum two. I mean, most of the time, two days off. So here we go there, you know, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, still no day off. I was oh. like, when are we going to stop? But then I understand, uh, I understand the, the mindset, you know, it's, it's, it's how it is. When there is work, you just do the work until you finish. And we were stuck in the desert. I'm like, you know what, I might as well continue to work instead of just having one day off and stay in my hotel. So that's what helped me go through, through that aspect of things. And... Uh, and the other thing was, uh, I guess for each position, you have like two or three people, and, uh, which is very unusual Assistance for me as you. well. Yes, people are doing just minimal things, but they're still there, you know, and, and it, it makes the set very crowded all the time. So I, I was trying to understand that, but also when you deal with a country that has like 1.4 billion people, you have a lot of manpower yeah. that you need to employ, so it makes sense. So. For each thing, there is a reason behind it. So that's why, you know, even though it was very different from what I knew, I also accepted everything. I read the book and it is phenomenal. I'm excited to watch the movie. Could you tell us more about your role in the movie, your character? Yeah, I play, I play um, Kadri, Ibrahim Kadri. And he's a guy, he's like a god sent kind of character. He's like a... Uh, I mean, he's like an angel, he's like a Moses who come from nowhere and just find the way, you know. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's really who he is, you know. In the journey, you, I'm always with the main character, which is, uh, uh, which is Naj Najib, Najib. Najib. Yeah, uh, played by Raj. And, uh, and yeah, it's a very, very intense and lonely kind of movie as well, because you, you're just fighting against... against all kind of situations, the climate, you know, the, the, the sandstorm, the, the animals, and, uh, and hunger, and, uh, and you're thirsty, and you don't know what's going on. Every time you think that you, you're on top of the mountain, of the, of the hill, there is another hill, and another hill, and another hill. So it's like, desperation kicks in very easily, but, but the character that I play is someone who has uh, uh, lots of faith, uh, and uh, a sense of insurance, of insurance, you know. He, he guides he guide, uh, uh, Najib, and uh, they're very quiet because they speak two different languages. They don't really understand each other. So that's why it's very quiet, you know, uh, uh, most of the time. So 
because it's quiet, that's why the music is extremely important. The music by A.R. Rahman, yeah, yeah. It, which is completely a, a different, a, a, an additional character to the movie as well. So, so that was great. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a great adventure kind of movie. Uh, there is drama attached to it because, you know, it's based on a real story. But, uh, but yeah, I think the people who are going to see that movie, they're going to go through an entire journey. And it's so inspirational that they're going to come back from the theater as changed, you know, because there is, a, there is so much depth in the movie. And, uh, and what we put in the center, what we value the most is humanity. Because the character that I play is someone who came out of nowhere, who's helping someone who's in need without anything in return. Good Samaritan. Exactly. So let me ask you, were you exposed to Indian cinema before you said yes to this project? I mean, I'm, you know, of course I, I, I knew about the, the Indian cinema. You have to understand that when we speak about Indian cinema uh, so outside, outside of, the, of, of India, we're talking about Bollywood. Yeah. Because that's the name that has been branded outside of India. So it's only when I come here that I realize that you do have different kind of cinema. Yeah. The South is com something completely different. Yeah. But from an American point of view, you think that old Indian movies are old. Song and dance. Are old, yeah, are old from Bombay, you know, are old Bollywood. Uh, but now I'm realizing that the South does some amazing movies. Yes. And, uh, and I'm interested to explore a bit more, you know, whether it's movies from here, from Chennai and some, some of, the, of the other states and cities. Uh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to learn as well and share some of my knowledge from over there, from, from Hollywood and from the rest of the world. Nice. And uh, what attracted you to this particular project, this particular role, like, you know, uh, of uh, a Good Samaritan, as you said? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, before I say yes to a project, it has to be for different reasons. Number one reason for this one is the fact that it was based on a true story. True story usually uh, make good movies. Um, and then I researched the people that are attached to the movie, meaning by that the director and the main Blessy. actor, Bl Blessy and, uh, and, and, and Raj. And I realized that it's two people that know, you know, they know what they're doing. They're, they're on top of their game. And then the, the, the movie was going to be composed by A.R. Rahman. And then the music as well, I mean, the sound was going to be... Yeah, so it was like, it's like a... A team put together in a cinema that I don't know much, but for me, I had no reason to doubt that it was going to be a great project. Because when you are in the business, you, you can easily identify the key players. So if the key players are all together in one room, you know you're going to have something excellent. So that's why, you know, without a doubt, I, I, I said yes to, to, to the project. You, you got the script, and you've learned that it's about a person who suffered a lot. Yeah. So what were your initial impressions about the script and uh, the person that Najib was? Uh, well, I felt for him, number one, and uh, it's the kind of struggle that I personally can relate to as yes. well. Uh, because, you know, throughout my life, I went through some level of difficulties, yeah, you know. I've read that, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so I, could, I could sort of relate to that. And, 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 and that's why at one point, you know, humanity always always pick the best Science, out of us, yes. yeah. Uh, but my God, I mean, what a, what a life story that, that, that he went through, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, just unbelievable. It reminds me of, in, in, in different ways, you know. When I was a lot younger, I was living in South Africa and I, I had a chance to meet with Nelson Mandela. Yes, I've heard that. So, yes. so to, some, to some extent, you know, those, those people with those heavy life stories like that, are just amazing, you know. So I'm like, uh, of course, I don't necessarily want to leave it that deeply and that brutally, but at the same time, when you come out of it, you know that you are someone who has uh, an understanding of life that is completely different to everybody else, because you know what it is to touch rock bottom, and uh, and you value things differently as well. So so I've, I'm always attracted to to those kind of strong and heavy stories. So the story of, of Najib, of course, is extremely appealing to me. And, uh, and yeah, uh, and I still can't believe that he's, he's around somewhere, you know, still living, you know, which is the best because he, he came out victorious out of all that. So have you met Najib? Briefly, 
briefly at the audio release, uh, uh, produced uh, music by A.R. Rahman. So I saw him, I mean, I just couldn't believe that it was him, you know. It's, uh, it's unbelievable, you know, to be alive and to have a movie being, being done about your own life. So that's something that's quite commendable. Okay, so uh, this movie is about a person who, as you said, suffered, hit the rock bottom, suffered the, I mean, uh, what seemed insurmountable. There were moments in his life where he thought this would be his last, but he emerged victorious. It's a story that can resonate with people all over the world. Of yeah. The underdog be coming up, emerging victorious. How has it, how has the story, how has everything about the movie resonated with you as a person, as an actor? Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, you know, I, I, can, I can sort of relate to, to, to the story, you know. I've had difficult times in my life, you know, where, you know, I, I was like homeless in Paris, for yeah. example, and so I had to kick back, I had to, to find ways to, to get out of that situation. But at the same time, you know, I came out, I came out victorious, you know. Uh, to the point where I was able to mingle with uh, with the most powerful people, the most powerful uh, head of states, and uh, but yet having had an experience where I was at the very bottom, you know what I mean. So I, I can understand that trajectory of life uh, quite 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 easily. Uh, so yeah, so I was uh, so yeah, I could relate to that. So so for me, it was uh, it was just a no brainer to to. to to come on board and, and to portray to portray Kadri as best as possible because Kadri is a different kind of beast really because uh, we're talking like a is a, is a it's is a character that is very close to God you know the what what we think of God you know what I mean uh, so to to play it in the sense that you know you make him as believable as possible uh, it's still very challenging you know especially under this uh, conditions and locations in which we were, you know, so, so yeah. And the other challenges that I had was where uh, I had to speak a different language. I had yeah. to, to speak Arabic, you know, yeah. uh, in most of the, of the movie and a little bit of broken English. So I don't speak Arabic. So I had to, to make full use of, of a coach that was, uh, that was given to me before going to Algeria. So we, we, you know, we practiced a little bit on the phone, and then, uh, and then I continued the, the lessons in, in Algeria and in Jordan. You've been part of movies across the world, uh, Hollywood movies, French movies, and uh, movies in Haiti, your own native language. How has working across languages and uh, cultures helped you or evolved you as an actor? And how has this work helped you to work with a crew and culture that is totally different from your being exposed earlier? Yeah, well, based on, on, on my experience in, in life, you know, I, you know, lived in, in, in Paris, you know, lived in Spain, Italy, England, South Africa, all those places uh, helped me as an actor to draw uh, from my own experience, you know, when I have to portray an actor, often I, I look at my own life to see, have I met that guy already? Have I be, was I that guy at one point in my life? And most likely I was, or at least I know of that person. And that's how I start, you know, sort of crafting the character. Uh, and, and, and second of all, the fact that I've, I've always traveled a lot, it opened my mind to different cultures. So for me, it's, you know, it's not, very difficult to open up to, to an Indian cinema that I might not know, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to even master it if possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so even though it was full of differences, but you know, none of those things really scared me. If anything, you know, it, it, there were great challenges. Yeah, to the point where, you know, this is, uh, I mean, what a way to, to be introduced to the Indian audience. You know, for me, it's just, it's a, you know, I'm full of gratitude, you know, when it comes to the way I'm entering in the Indian space uh, when it comes to movies, because, you know, I'm thinking maybe, you know, I could do a few more gigs here, you know, so, so we'll see what happens. I would love to anyway. So uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you have a, like, Hollywood has a particular method of acting and down here, India has different uh, 
aesthetics when it comes to movies and acting. So did you have to adapt your acting styles to suit the sensibilities, aesthetics and nuances of Indian cinema or Malayalam cinema in particular? I don't think so. I was playing a character, so I played a character. I'll play the same character, you know. It, I, I don't think the style, the, the style, you don't really see it in the character. Maybe you see it in the cinematography, you see it in the, in, 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 in the movie itself, but not necessarily in the characters, you know, especially in this particular movie, which doesn't necessarily reflect your, I mean, I don't even know what the usual uh, Indian movie is, if, it, if there is such a thing, but for me, I was playing a great character in a great cinematic uh, movie. And, uh, and I always approach a role the same way. Who is that person? What's the intention? Where do you come from? Where is he going? You know, and, and try to understand all those questions and then dive into it and then try to be as best as possible to, to you know, to try to portray that, that, that character as best as possible. So that's your method of getting into the character. Sorry? That is your method of getting into the character. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, I, I, need, I need to know the character first. You know, I need to understand. Not necessarily the lines, you know. Yeah. The lines, they come last. But I need to know who, who the person is, you know. Uh, really get a full sense of the person. So, you know, as I said, you know, I, I made my own research. You know, I looked around. I've, I've uh, you know, I've, I've watched some documentaries to see, you know, who could be as close as that character, you know, to, to help me, you know, uh, get there. And, and once, once I've identified a few clues, then, you know, I knew exactly how to, how to get there, how to slowly give him, give him life. Because the reality is I have to be completely separated to that person because a role that I play is not me. Yes, you will find some of me in it because it's normal, but, you know, it should not be me and it will never be me. And as an actor, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to, you know, whatever the, the character needs to be and to do, that's what I'm going to give him. You know, I can, I'll easily forget about who I am. I'm coming to a more personal question. Uh, you're a philanthropist, apart from being an actor. I read that you built a school in your country and you're also, you have also set up a foundation, Hollywood Unites for Haiti. Sort of your way of giving back to the society and making a difference. In your own words, it's like being God sent to at least a few people, like you've been to, like your character has been to Najib. Hmm. What motivates you to be this multifaceted personality? Um, it's something that almost came naturally when I was uh, on a TV show called Heroes, which was yeah. a, a show that had a lot of success, probably the number one show in the world when it first came out in 2006. Uh, had a lot of attention. I had access to a lot of people and to a lot of things. And I was also going back and forth to Haiti and I, I could see how, how much people were struggling in the country. So that's how almost automatically the idea came to mind. You know, it's like, what can I do to, to get all the Hollywood community together to care for Haiti that was really struggling? So the number one thing to do was to come up with a foundation. So I came up with Hollywood Unites for Haiti. And, uh, and, and what inspired it is, I don't know if you remember, back in, in, in 2005 and 2006, uh, you had Matt Damon, George Clooney, uh, Ben Affleck, and a couple of other guys all uniting for, for Congo. So they were all really speaking up and trying to, to raise awareness on what was going on in Congo. So that's what I wanted to do for Haiti. You know, I did Hollywood Unites for Haiti. I got a bunch of people, you know, to come and start speak about the problems of Haiti. We did some great work, including building schools. And, uh, and yeah, I'm very proud of that. We did that. I did that from 2008. And unfortunately, because of the situation in the country, I had to shut it down uh, around 2020. So, so now it's, 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 you know, it's no longer going, but my work has not stopped because I still work with other groups, you know, such as Artists for Peace and Justice, and, uh, and, and groups that are doing amazing work in, uh, in Haiti. Okay. Finally, if you were to take home one thing from Najib and God life, what would that be? Like something that really moved you, something that really touched you about God life and the character Najib? Uh, I think, I think we, the belief, 
the hope. Because uh, when there is hope, there is life. And I think that's what Najib had for him, you know, he always hoped, he was, he was always hoping, he always believed that he would make it. And when you believe, you know, you, you find ways to succeed. So, so yeah, and also the, 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 the humanity that comes out of the movie, at the end of it all, you know, you really see that, you know, because of all the struggle that he went through, at the end he came out of it victorious. Uh, and, and that is also very much because of my character and, and and yeah, I think, I think people should value more humanity over a bunch of other things that we, we put our, mind, our minds into these days, you know. Uh, we tend to forget about ourselves, and, and I think that's, that's a shame, because we are number one. We are the, the priority, nothing else. We should be the priority. Yes. And so that's it from me. Uh, all the very best for your movie. It was Thank nice you. interacting with you, and hope to see you in some other Indian cinema or Malayalam movie projects. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Yeah. Indeed.